Fox. Fallon Fox. She is an MMA fighter. It's not her undefeated record that has everyone talking. She is a transgender female. It is an advantage over a woman, you know? Oh, oh. That's it. The world is having a long overdue conversation around transgender issues recently, inspired by the likes of Caitlyn Jenner and Laverne Cox in Orange is the New Black. Among the ranks of transgender pioneers is Fallon Fox, the first openly transgender athlete in the history of MMA. And she joins us this morning. Good morning, Fallon. So good to see you. Welcome back to Toronto. I know you've been here before. You're a fan of our city? I am. I am. I love Toronto and I love Canadians. So um, it's, it's, good, it's good company here. And yeah. during Pan Am, it's so exciting. We'll oh, talk about sure. what you're doing tonight in just a little bit, but I want to give people a little bit of a backstory as to what it was like growing up. Your childhood was a very difficult one. It's the story we've heard come out of Caitlyn Jenner with the sit down interviews. Yours was very similar in that you always felt you weren't yourself. For sure, for sure. I always um, had, had this feeling that I should be a woman or that I was a woman. And it was a very difficult time um, when I was a child um, trying to figure all of this out by myself with no education on the subject yet. Your parents actually said we need to seek therapy at one point. Oh, for sure, for sure. When I was older, mm -hmm. I came out to them and I told them and, and they sent me to deconversion therapy, um, which is trying to turn you from gay to straight when I wasn't even gay. So, yeah. And, and much like Caitlyn Jenner was saying, when you could, you any opportunity, you would try on, you know, your mom's clothing and it felt good and you couldn't really articulate why. And then when you were a teenager, you were watching Donahue. And what did you see on that show? I saw a transgender woman. And, and I, I, I saw, I started to get a grasp of what a transgender person was at that time. And I, I looked at her and I said, that's, some, that's, that's me. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I am, I believe. Because so, yeah. it was hard to identify. You had joined the Navy. Of course. And then yeah. what made you decide to s stop living this repressed life and finally be your true self? I know that without support, you flew to Thailand to undergo right. surgery. What was that like, being all by yourself, taking on such a daunting surgery? Wow, wow. I just, I, I was alone by myself in Thailand, and, and um, I suppose um, it was just determination that just kept me going through that time yeah. to get through it by myself. Yeah. And you have a daughter who is now 19 years old. Yes, yes, she's awesome. How yeah. did she, what did you first tell her? How old was she? She was about five or six years old when I first told her that I was a transgender, um, and I kind of told her, um, in child speak, what was going to happen to me, and everything went, went, went good, yeah. As a child does. As right? a child no does, just right? like, okay, now can we play? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you right. decide to get into MMA. How did that yeah. first begin? I know you were always athletic, but how did you get into the martial It was jujitsu, I think. Yeah, yeah. I actually decided to get into to jujitsu recreationally, right? It was a recreational sport, and this, that's something that we're going to talk about at 519, the summit that we're, that we're going to do tonight. Um, um, I, I, did, I did it recreationally just to try and get into shape, and, and it just kind of evolved into me wanting to, to play uh, MMA, um, just mixing all of the sports, all the, all the martial arts sports together. And now you are embroiled in controversy. You have Joe Rogan of UFC fame speaking out. Yeah. You've got Dana White, who is the president and co-founder of all things UFC. You've got Ronda Rousey, who's right now the yeah. champ. And all of them saying it's an unfair advantage that you have previously being born biologically a male in the ring and that they think there's no place for you in UFC. To that you respond? To that I respond, I think they need a little bit more education on the issue. Um, um, there's a pop culture issue right now where some people don't want me to be in the sport, but the doctors and the scientists in the know are saying, of course, I fit within the range of a female fighter and a female athlete. So, And that you actually have a tougher time training and building muscle mass because of all the estrogen that you take in. Exactly, exactly. And they say things like, you know, um, my jawline is too big, and it's not that big, or my hands are too big. My hands are bigger or, than yeah, yours. Right? <laughs> they really are. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's actually so, tougher for you to compete against a female and to build that muscle mass. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I have a lower, I have a lower testosterone count than even you do or any woman in this room um, does because of the simple fact that I, of my transgender surgery. So. And so you're in town tonight to talk about just this, how mm -hmm. you know, you've been so welcome and so appreciated and celebrated in the LGBT community, not so much within the MMA community. So you're breaking down barriers tonight at an event, 7 p.m. Yeah. You're encouraging people to come out. You're saying at a local level, recreational level, this shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue for any LGBT, ath uh, LGBT athlete or any um, person who wants to play sports at all. I mean, it should, sports should be inclusive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important for everybody to, to play sports. How's your family now? My family's doing good, right? Yes, yeah, so now yeah, they're, they're, everything's settled, they're accepting, and 
oh my family loving. like no I, I kind of I'm kind of like um not talking to my family right now they they haven't come around yet but um, I have my daughter and she's sweet and, she, and she's accepting and, and supportive. Yeah, supportive. Thank yeah. you. Continued success. Yeah. So make sure you guys head down tonight. It'll be the Isabel uh, Bader Theater, 7 p.m. as part of the 519 Huddle event. Tickets are on sale for only 25 bucks. Head on down. Meet Fallon for more information. Breakfasttelevision.ca. A pleasure. Thank you so much, Fallon. Oh, a pleasure to meet you too. Thank you. To you yeah. We'll be back with more BT right after this.